A warm welcome to everybody out there uh, to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. Also in the name of JFT Brokers, a warm welcome as well. And yeah, my name is <coughs> Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski, as always for those kind of uh, webinars, this uh, specific hour of the day and uh, yeah, the weekday is also always the same. Today, yeah, we have the 12th of July. Uh, 2018, um, so more than half a year is already over. So, but anyhow, <clears throat> today's topic is daily seasonals in the forex market. Oh, sorry, <coughs> one second. Sorry, I'm back again here. Daily seasonals in the forex market. In seasonals, we have had already uh, such a topic. Um, when we talk about our day of week seasonal for um, trading DAX, and uh, today it's about forex markets in general, or in general all kind of markets. Later you will see that we even can touch um, so-called Bund future or um, Brent or whatever. It's always the same. We look for seasonals, but we do not look for seasonals in a sense of um, a specific month or even a specific quarter, like um, uh, springtime or um, December or May or something like that, because I don't like that kind of approach. The reason is simply because um, always the statistics is quite poor. If you think about, we go for uh, months of uh, the year and you go back for 10 years history of data, uh, then you have 12 times, for example, December. And even if you go for 20 years, then um, you have 20 times uh, December. So from statistical point of view, um, that's not a good statistics. And therefore I don't like uh, those kind of uh, statements about seasonals. But if you go for daily seasonals, the picture changes because now we have, um, for example, if you go for Monday, then we have 52 Mondays a year. Uh, in 10 years, already 520. So now statistics um, can, can play a role and uh, that's much better and that is what we will use. And therefore, I uh, specifically like those kind of daily seasonals because it reflects a little bit what happens during a week. Maybe the Monday has a specific meaning for specific underlyings or maybe the Tuesday. Uh, might, it might be related to news um, it, because typically specific news are always at the same day, but we don't care because we look for the price changes and we try to find common conclusions for a specific underlying and that's exactly what we do here and yeah that's daily seasonals and um, one other remark here because we have had a similar topic two weeks ago and um, I at that point in time I already said hmm, uh, the two webinars in the are in the wrong order today is let's call it the first one <laughs> and the one for uh, two weeks ago has been the second it was my mistake but uh, maybe now things become a little bit more clear uh, than two weeks ago because what we have here are the real basics for daily seasonals. As always, you can already download the slides uh, if you like, and uh, simply by going to your GoToWebinar control panel, um, I've uploaded uh, the PDF document already. And later we have a couple of Excel sheets once again. If you're interested in those, just send me an email and I make sure that you get them um, in the two formats, um, Microsoft Excel and uh, LibreOffice. The other thing, as always, I have to mention the risk disclaimer um, because we talk about uh, specific trading strategies. And if you finally mm, trade, it may, may be exact, exactly those kind of strategies. You trade simply for your own. Um, I think that's, obvious. as always, self-explaining um, and it's always your own responsibility for your own trades. A little bit more in detail, we will once again as two weeks ago, we will start with that Friday gold rush. 
But now, today, we will really demonstrate exactly that Friday Gold Rush. Um, Friday Gold Rush simply stands for the observation <clears throat> that on Fridays, price of gold typically went north. And um, a couple of weeks ago, Andre Stagge has made an, um, a webinar exactly for, for that. Therefore, I um, have referenced a little bit to Andre Stagge. Um, but as far as I know, he is not the inventor of exactly that kind of observation. Um, but anyhow, um, I would like to mention him here. What we will then do is we will really start from the scratch. We, we we start with a plain, with an empty um, Excel sheet, and I will quickly, and it only takes five minutes to establish an Excel sheet which really shows that kind of statistics. And we are already then prepared to investigate investigate any other underlying. And I will demonstrate how quick and easy you can do those things <clears throat> by your own. Therefore, I call it simply a minor Excel exercise here <clears throat> to establish that kind of statistics. And then we go back to real trades with stop loss and uh, everything, because then we, we go for the daily strategy. Everything today is on a, a D1 chart, on a D1 base. We will open our trades <clears throat> at the beginning of the day, and we will close those trades at the end of the day. Um, so formally, still those trades are intraday trades. Um, and you might close those trades even an hour earlier to avoid swap costs, but that doesn't change the overall picture. Um, that, that kind of general, generalization, generalization, complicated wording, sorry, um, we will do in Excel once again. And we I have prepared something that you can do anything for any underlying simply by your own. And finally, since I'm not only related to those Excel sheets, I have investigated uh, that kind of strategy much more in detail um, with walk forward methodology, for example. Um, I will show you the complete portfolio um, based on two, two um, assumptions. Okay, the Friday gold rush. You, you remember we have had that chart two weeks ago. And of course, um, it's it's more or less um, yeah, illustrating the statement by its own, because that, that blue line simply goes north, and that illustrates that on Friday, um, yeah, you should go long with gold, and that's all. But how can we do something like that by um, our own and really quickly? So. We would start always with the data sources. And um, I mentioned here three, Yahoo Finance for daily, Dukas Copy you can use for uh, daily data as well. And um, for daily, you can use that um, strange sound, uh, that strange name stock um, with a Q, stock.com um, as a data source for daily um, um, charts or daily um, historical prices. Uh, I have to mention one additional point here, because if you go for Dukas Copy, for example, and you would download um, D1 uh, data there, uh, then you will realize um, that you have to shift all the data by one day. It uh, um, goes back to the original data source of Dukas Copy and um, the time zone they belong. And therefore, everything has to be shifted by one day. As always, if you go for historical data, just do a cross-check with those data, and you will easily realize about the weekends. So just as a remark, if you go for D1 data, um, download it at Dukas Copy. All the three sources are free. You don't have to pay um, for anything there, and you can get uh, those data. Our task here for that Excel exercise, I will demonstrate just in in, in a few minutes, <laughs> um, is that we want to derive whether the specific days of the week have a specific edge. So like that Friday gold rush. And that's all. We just ask ourselves, are specific days of the week, um, do they have a bias in a certain direction, maybe north, maybe south. And that's all. 
If so, we are um, already on a good uh, path to a new trading strategy because, as you know, we need probability advantages in order to um, get a profitability um, profitable trading strategies. Without that advantage, we will fail with our trading strategy. So that's one base. And even that one is not enough. Later we will see that uh, there's another day of the week which goes south for gold. And even that going south is not enough in order to um, be transferred to a, a profitable strategy, trading strategy. Reason? Costs. When it comes to commission and spread, then um, our advantage is not big enough in order to be profitable. Mention, we go for Excel. So, um, in order to, to get our uh, strategy. So, we, we really start with a plain, um, um, empty Excel sheet. Okay, hmm. now we need data. No problem. We go for data and I go here for this um, stock.com and it's quite easy. Um, we want to go for gold. So, symbol is um, this one here. And then we can download the data quite easy. Uh, historical data. And then you see you could even download data from 1793, which is really a long term history, but it's not really filled with all uh, the days. I always go for right now for 2000, uh, starting with that uh, number. And then I can download the data. Um, and then I can open those data uh, here directly in um, LibreOffice. And the good thing um, why I use LibreOffice because the import functionality from LibreOffice to get those data into your sheets is um, much better than with Excel because if you use exactly those kind of settings here, uh, then you can, can transform and read any kind of date uh, and time and um, the different kind of, of uh, separators and uh, different kind of, of um, decimal separators, no problem. You can read everything. So um, now we have the data and let me make it a little bit larger here so that you can see it a little bit better. So of course, that are the price of gold and we do cross check here uh, whether everything with the data look fine and uh, just plotting the data, um, then we have something which looks like this. And you see, okay, uh, looks good. That is the gold chart uh, we are used to. Of course, we want to know the day of the week. And there's an Excel functionality. It's simply called a weekday. Um, and then we get our date transferred to a number and that number you will see is a number in this case between two and the maximum is six in this case and it um, just stands for two is Monday and six is Friday uh, the two missing numbers is uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, that would be one and seven and then we have the day of the week we will use that kind of information uh, just in a minute because we want to investigate all the different days, Monday, Tuesday, and so on, um, independently. Okay, and what we will look for is a change. Um, the change in percent. So, and with change in percent, I simply mean, yeah, the, the difference from close of the day minus open of the day divided by open. So that is a percentage change uh, at a specific day, starting here with 0.3% at that day, next day minus 1.5 and so on and so forth. So that's all. We look for percentage changes and not absolute changes simply because um, everything is relative. So um, at a level of uh, $300 for gold, um, $10 would have been already a big 
uh, increase or big change um, at two thousand ten dollar would not be that much. So therefore, we do everything um, percentage wise. Now we are interested in those um, five days of the week: two, three, four, five, six, exactly Monday up to Friday. And what we want to to differentiate here is um, that we later can sum up all the changes of Mondays, all the changes of Tuesday, and so on. So we, we have to ask, is the current date exactly the one we are interested in? So um, that's uh, exactly that uh, kind of um, comparison here. And if so, then we would like to see here the change of that day. And otherwise, we put a zero here. And that's not totally all, because we want to copy that uh, cell to all the other ones. Therefore, we have to mark uh, a few things with a dollar sign and um, in order to be prepared for that copy process. So we need dollar here. We need dollar before that number. And finally, we need a dollar here so that everything moves well uh, when we copy everything. So, and now we have exactly what we want to have. Um, the next day here, it's a Tuesday, we have that number here um, for Wednesdays here, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and now we simply go for something which looks like an equity curve. Uh, so we want to sum up all those changes uh, systematically. And um, we start with the first day. So there's nothing to be uh, summed up. And for the next day, we have to add everything uh, to the previous day. And um, we go he here as well. And then we are nearly done with um, everything here. Now we go for everything is now summed up um, through our complete 18 years of history. And then we can plot uh, that uh, against the date. And then we can look for statistical edges. Um, so now we need uh, not lines, this one. And let me label um, those right. And then you see immediately that we are already completed with our statistical analysis. That's all. I think it took me hmm, maybe five, maybe 10 minutes. And then we uh, have a nice tool to investigate statistical edges based on the day of the week. So let's look for what we have here. So um, you see that, um, oh, my labeling didn't work well. Let me change that. Um, and then we can draw our conclusions. Um, change chart type. That's correct. Um, ah, anyway, um, we still know which one is which. So. Let's directly jump to the brown one. Brown is six, brown is Friday. And there we have the statistical edge for goat. You see that summing up all the changes of Fridays is a line a curve which goes north. That would mean if you would trade every Friday long, that line more or less would represent our equity. And looking for that nearly straight line, hey, that's really a nice statement to have that straight line. Think about your equity of your trading account. Mm, not that bad. So if we can transfer that line to our trading results, great. Then we have one extra element for our overall trading activities. So that looks already promising. But we have another line here. Let's go for Monday. Monday is blue. That goes south. 
what does it mean? Okay, in terms of an equity, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Nobody want to trade uh, something which goes south. But <laughs> the good thing is we can invert that sign simply by going short. So that blue line is already a hint. Hmm, Monday might be a good short day for gold. Interesting. And the three remaining days doesn't look that good. So they don't have a real preference. And so what we have here is, okay, we have replicated uh, the analysis for Friday Gold Rush. We already see another hint that Monday seems to be um, a short day. So those kind of statements are already extremely valuable. Even if you don't think about systematic trading activities like what we do later here, um, and that we really go with long trades, with stop loss and so on, you might use that kind of information for any other trading idea. Even if you go discretionary, um, then you might look to, a, uh, to the gold chart on Friday, and you might look for good entry points for for next trade on gold. My statement here would be, or my recommendation would be, look only for long trades, because then you have that statistical bias behind you, with you, that gold has a tendency to go north to inc for increased prices on Fridays. And you would do exactly the opposite on Mondays, because you know from that kind of analysis, <clears throat> hey, looks like um, there's a preference going south. I don't ask the question why, and ex uh, especially for gold, you might have some other statements why um, the price goes up on Friday. I don't care um, about why. I only care about the statistics. And that kind of statement I can have here directly in a few minutes for one underlying. And that you can see um, that that it's that easy to, to get those kind of analysis here. Let's change the underlying. Um, let's go for something else. Let's go for um, the so-called Bund Future. Um, that is a symbol for that. Um, no, not this one. GG. Uh, now you can see here Euro Bund, um, and that's the Bund Future, the German one. And we can uh, download uh, the data here once again. Let's go for data starting from 2000. And um, let's have a look on those. And in a minute, I will do one ex um, additional example. Let's go for those kind of data. Just open them in Excel. Then we copy the data to our already existing Excel sheet. And um, we are almost done because you see, oh, the chart doesn't look that good. Um, we have still some, some gold prices here. So that's uh, the last couple of lines here. And I will remove those. And then uh, we only have the Bund future within that kind of analysis. And here we are. So um, what you can see here is, once again, those kind of statistics. And um, let's, let's quickly go jump through it. So you see in blue, Monday, uh, that blue line. OK, it's not that straight as gold on Friday, but still not that bad. Um, so we can have the Bund future as a long trade for Mondays. The other days, mm, the green one doesn't look that, uh, does look as well, quite well. So that's uh, Thursday. Um, the, the, on Tuesday and Wednesday, there's no real trend. So we would not go for anything like um, on those two days. And to have an additional one, which is a little bit more impressive, um, let's download data for oil. Um, and uh, let's go for Brent. Uh, that's this kind of symbol. Um, and we could download from 
two, uh, from 1983, but we go once again from 2000 um, and have a look here. What's about statistics on that one on Brent oil? And you see it only takes a few minutes and to draw those kind of conclusions we are really interested in because that kind of statistical edge can help us quite well for any trading activity. Let's have a look here. So now, hey, good thing. Um, the blue line, which is Monday, goes more or less straight south. Great. So oil is a short candidate on Monday. Good thing. It's, now we have already a good thing on Friday with gold, very good thing on um, Monday, short now with um, Brent. Great. That's exactly those kind of statements we are looking for in order to enhance our trading. And even um, uh, Thursday doesn't look that bad, um, that going north. Hmm? Why not? So that day might be a good day for um, for long days, uh, for long trades. <clears throat> and once again, you can use that information even for discretionary trading just to have a bias. Be Normally, you, you look to a chart and you ask, hey, should I go long? Should I go short? Mm, now you have at least the statistical edge um, uh, on your side. And that's great. Um, so that helps already for any other kind of trading activity. So that's a way, easy Excel exercise to go uh, through a number of underlines and it only takes you per underlying a couple of minutes and then you can have all those statements. But now we want to go a step further because we want to use that kind of information and translate that into real trades. Because a statistical edge is not normally enough or, um, for, for a profitable trading uh, strategy. So we generalize now what we are doing here. So we will investigate really as a trading strategy, including spreads. And we will investigate separately the different days of week, Monday, Tuesday, and so on, so five times. And of course, a specific day might be a long day or a short day we can investigate we can play around with that okay still so now we have 10 combinations <clears throat> and i will increase that number uh, further by a factor of two um, but that's for later we will go for a few real degrees of freedom we want to place a stop loss that stop loss we will place in in percent of, of uh, the open of the trade. Good. And we can change it, of course. We might go for 0.5%, 1%, 2%, whatever. So that are the real degrees of freedom. And as the previous webinar two weeks ago, <clears throat> we will introduce an EMA um, as a trend filter. Think about in terms of, hey, okay, price is above and a certain EMA. I only want to go for long trades and nothing else. If the price is below that EMA, I will simply not trade. Doesn't matter. That might help us a lot, especially if you go for for um, something like indices, if you go for, for uh, S&P 500. Think about, okay, we might come to the conclusion that Thursday is a good long day for, for, that index, for, for that index. But now the market breaks down. Okay, no problem. If we cross that EMA, if we are below that EMA, we would not trade. Good. So that kind of filter helps us even to further improve our um, strategy. But now the question is, we can do it a little bit more complex. So still, as I mentioned already, intuitively one would always state long trades only if the price is above that EMA. Okay, I would agree um, intuitively, but sometimes um, intuition is, is wrong. 
So let's keep it open. Maybe we can do exactly the opposite. So if the price is above the EMA and we are investigating a short, short strategy, yeah, that's now our starting point. So it's then a little bit more like a reversal strategy. Price is above the EMA and maybe we find underlyings or the tendency to say, okay, mm, go back to in, in, into the direction of that EMA. So therefore I call it reversal flag. And that finally gives you, if you go through all the combinations, gives you eight different uh, possibilities. Having that in mind, we can go directly to our Excel sheet and investigate real trades now um, for specific days of the week. Okay, here is that Excel sheet. And uh, as I mentioned, you um, have access to those as well. Just send me an email. Uh, email address comes later on my last slide once again. Um, and you can play around <clears throat> with different underlyings, different values here. And let me quickly guide you what I have done here so that you understand a little bit more um, how that uh, uh, Excel sheet works. I know everybody is already, uh, already now looking to um, our equity curve here. Okay, equity here for um, starting at 2000 is in units of R. So that's the risk unit. Um, that's exactly um, the stop loss value to, yeah, I think that's maybe the best translation. Uh, let me give you an example. Think about um, price of gold is at 1000 and um, you place your stop loss 1% um, apart from, from uh, the open of your trade. So 1% from 1,000 is the 10. And if you go for a long trade, you would place your stop loss at 990. Okay, now the next question is how much money you would like to risk uh, for the trade? Okay, maybe you say $100. Now you can uh, translate that $100 and with a stop loss of 990, with the number of lots you can trade. It would be maybe, I do not, I'm not doing the calculation right now here. Maybe it's um, 0.05 um, lots. Okay, so we know if we have a certain risk value and a certain distance for our stop loss, then we always can translate that in the lot size of our trade. Always that kind um, of calculation you should do always in any trading activity. If that trade would touch our stop loss, okay, then we would lose exactly our risk. For in my example, the one hundred dollar. Good. So, but if if we go ten dollar upwards and close trade there, then we would profit one hundred dollar. And that's talking about. R, that risk unit R. It's exactly the, the amount of money you risk with any trade. It would be um, the profit in the other direction. That means if we have here a number like um, profit of 50R, it means if you go for $100 per trade, uh, then we would um, profit $5,000. So you can translate always set a number in, in real um, currencies, just multiplying with the risk per trade. So that's the y-axis. Uh, the x-axis is uh, self-explaining. It's just a date. You see, as always, we have a lot of statistics here, number of days, the sum of uh, our profits and uh, win rate and so on and so forth. Later, as in previous um, webinars, we would look for what I call opti and we want to minimize that number because the smaller that number, the better the strategy. But now to how we do everything here. Everything starts quite similar to our pure statistical analysis. We go for the day of the week and we have the same kind of numbers here. And later we can switch um, um, simply by, by selecting five or two or whatever. We have an EMA 
<clears throat> which is calculated here as well. So we can change uh, the EMA period directly here. And we can ask ourselves, do we look for a long strategy or a short strategy? If you go for a long strategy, then every trade will be a long trade. And if you change it to minus one, okay, then everything is a short trade. Later, I come to once again to that reversal flag as introduced already um, on my slides, and that flag EMA on and off uh, off is that zero. So um, I come to that once again here. What you can change is finally, if you want to optimize a certain sub strategy, and the sub strategy is. Um, is specified by the day of the week, specified long or short, and specified with reversal, um, yes or no. Your degrees of freedom to get that strategy up and running is then finally only changing EMA and stop loss. And you might do this with that um, Excel solver functionality in order to optimize your strategy. In principle, you can use take profit as well uh, with that. Uh, let me change it to a reward ratio. Um, that is here set to 100, which would mean you will never uh, touch our take profit. But in principle, we can introduce take profit level here as well. So the trade itself is quite easy. Um, so we we look whether we are above or below the EMA. Um, and if we are at the right day, and if we are with the right condition with a long and reversal, then we might open a trade and we set a stop loss, we set take profit. Then it comes that we look is during the day our stop loss being hit. Um, if so, okay, trade is uh, a minus one R trade. Um, as the second one here, there we have that minus one R trade because for that trade, uh, we hit our stop loss. Okay. Anyhow, um, the other trade here is um, has not touched the stop loss. Therefore, we have, uh, in this case, even a profitable trade um, and everything is calculated in that risk unit R. Well, so now, let me change a few numbers just that we see uh, how everything works here. So um, we might go for another day of the week. We might go for three, which is in this case um, Tuesday. Mm. Doesn't look that good. Two. Oh, hmm. Interesting. Equity goes south. Okay, it's not that astonishing because we, uh, our pure statistical analysis showed us already that on Monday we have a preference for short um, okay therefore that we have here an equity which goes south is uh, we can understand so okay then let's change the trade direction from long to short and now the disappointing uh, thing occurs even we have that probability advantage for going south we cannot get it as a profitable strategy just by reversing the trade direction, which should be the case, but it's because of the spread. Let me change the spread and let me change um, stop loss. Then you see, okay, it's a little bit better and we might go for a different EMA and it's getting once again a little bit better. Yeah, but still we cannot get it really profitable and still we have to go back with real spreads of the work and then it will not be profitable the good thing is we have other days of the week so we we can go for example uh, once again uh, back to to our um, that is uh, thursday and um, this one oh let me go back to Thursday again. Still, we have the situation short trades. Okay, hmm, something we should investigate further because, um, and, and I make already the remark here, later you get for any underlying um, 
lots of, of uh, examples in one table with the right parameters, but still you can play around uh, by your own uh, doing some analysis like this one yeah but you you can have access to um, the complete analysis from my end here so Thursday short doesn't look so bad but we know we can do better um, let's go for Friday and once again we go for long trades on Friday and um, yeah right now we have a stop loss of 3%, maybe we go down to 2%, uh, even further down. Um, you see, we, we we get some more profits here in terms of Rs. Um, if we would only look to um, our optimization number, Opti, uh, then this one here would a little bit better as well. And maybe we can change to other EMA values. Um, and you see, the good thing is the picture doesn't change that much, which is good because if we can change our parameters for EMA values and um, stop loss values and the equity is still good, that's a good indication of a stable strategy. What we can do here as well is we can simply switch off the EMA, EMA. So if I put it in zero here, um, then we don't use an EMA anymore. Strategy might look better for the one or the other, but it's worse. The reason is the drawdown. And I can quickly realize that by an increasing value of, of Opti. Um, so the drawdowns without an EMA filter are higher. Um, the slope is not that bad, but um, now uh, as a proof that you can change the EMA value and it doesn't have an impact on strategy is simply because EMA is switched off. So we don't use um, anymore the EMA. You, I put that uh, into that Excel sheet as an extra functionality so that you can really um, have different views on different underlyings. So finally, doesn't look that bad if we switch on EMA um, and we might go for something like this one here uh, as a good strategy. I summarize all the numbers in one table later. What I want to do here is I want to invite you just to do something similar by your own, simply because what you, you do here helps you to understand your strategy, helps you to, to um, yeah, to, to come to better conclusions and even to see, okay, even if I have something like this, which is really not bad, I still have drawdowns and you see those in your equity. The final clue is, of course, to combine lots of those strategies to a complete portfolio. I come to that as well. But now, just that you have an impression, um, does it only work here for, for, um, for, for gold, I have even better examples. Uh, let me change underlying. Let me go for Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. And here we have a very good situation um, for Mondays with an EMA of 13. Now it's a so-called reversal strategy. It's a long strategy, but we only open our trades if we are below the EMA. So we reverse that picture, which has been intuitively always a one, but why not going for a minus one? So why not change um, our perspective here? And with a stop loss of close to 1%. Doesn't mm -hmm. look um, that bad. So Opti is already um, below 1,000, which is really good. And if you do something here by your own, don't forget to change the spread. If you would still have the spread here um, being for, for gold, um, I can so show you what happens. <laughs> then you don't have a good strategy. But of course, we don't have spreads of 0.2 um, for the Canadian dollar uh, Swiss franc. So that's the Monday strategy. It's a long strategy for Canadian dollar Swiss franc, and it's a re reversal one. 
to see what is the impact of the EMA, we can switch it off. And you see, mm, it's good to have that EMA as an additional filter within our strategy. Last example here, Euro US dollar, also not that bad going north. Um, it's once again a Monday strategy, but now it's a short strategy with reversal, meaning we would go um, with our short trade if we are above the EMA. Tight stop loss of 0.5%, and um, then we have one additional strategy. You see, that really looks like a portfolio. It's not a single underlying uh, only which we can trade uh, with that kind of logic. Of course, every underlying has different values. Why not? Why should gold behave exactly the same like like uh, the DAX or um, Canadian dollar Swiss franc? There's no reason that those different underlyings should be traded the same. Therefore, we can do it individual for any underlying. I mentioned I have summarized already all those results for a couple of underlyings um, and the specific days of the week. Let's go for that as well. So I have investigated indices, commodities, forex pairs, and um, don't worry that you cannot see within that table anything um, within that Excel sheet, then you can read everything. What does that Excel sheet um, contain? Or what are the numbers there? Every line later is for one um, strategy. It's a specific underlying, a specific stop loss value, EMA period, the day of the week, and of course, that reversal flag being plus or minus one. And in, within that Excel sheet, because I have all uh, the uh, Excel sheet itself is only the summary of my um, investigations via my, my self written C code. Um, and within C, unfortunately, I have a, another number for the uh, days of the week. So now one is a Monday and so forth. By the way, that is a typical one. Uh, Excel is the exception here. Um, just that, that you know, one is now the Monday and five is the Friday. I promised that we have a look here as well. And um, here we go. That's the equity of that um, portfolio. And that portfolio is trading in total 66 sub strategies. How to read just that table? Um, let me go for, for an example like um, this one here, just as an example. So we are talking about Australian dollar, US dollar. Good. Then later you see uh, LS1 means it's a long strategy. We do that on um, day number three, which is Wednesday, and without reversal. So reversal flag is one. We use an EMA, EMA period of nine and a stop loss value of 0.9%. That's all. That's one of those 67 sub strategies which are profitable. And you see, you have lots of examples and you can, you may sort that table um, according to the day of the week, uh, then you see that we have uh, a couple of strategies for each day of the week. Not every underlying works on every day in every direction, of course not. But now you see we have uh, 18 um, strategies for Monday and um, about the same number for Tuesday and so on and so forth. And that's the real portfolio. And what you see here is an equity, which is really looking good. In this case, every trade is because you see on the y-axis uh, the euro symbol. Um, I have translated already everything to 100 euro trades. So the risk per trade is 100 euro. That's a quite profitable strategy here. <clears throat> and with um, um, that you have that number as well, 
the drawdown within what you see here is 5,200 um, euros. So that's all. So we don't need that huge um, trading account to um, do that strategy. It's really looking well. And for those who are uh, a little bit longer with those kind of webinars, in this case, uh, the optimization has been done for the complete period of history in one step. Still, I have looked for a huge neighborhood, um, so a huge number of neighbors for those parameters, which means if, for example, an EMA of 100 um, works, then of course 110 should still work, 90 should, uh, should still work. Stop loss might be the best at 1%, but then still with 1.1% strategy must work uh, as well. Only those which, which pass that stability test are part here, but it has been an optimization um, for the complete history time we have within our data. But I have done one step further, just that you see that this um, strategy is really doing a good job. So that one we have had already, but now we can do what I call the walk forward methodology. So we do optimization in a certain history time frame, time window, and then we apply our parameters to the upcoming future, maybe for the next one month. And um, so in this case, the optimization is a different time period, um, time window than the one we apply our parameters. So the good thing is that is exactly what we would do if you go live with a strategy like this. We have done some certain optimization and from tomorrow onwards, we trade that strategy. So let's walk forward. I've done um, a couple of webinars uh, specifically for that topic as well. And you'll find them on the JFD YouTube channel um, at the, the JFD. I only show that graph here that you see, even with what forward methodology, strategy still works quite well. It's not as good as before, but I want to share that with you to have a proof that it's not <clears throat> an overfitting <clears throat> procedure that uh, have um, created that good portfolio. We can really do it and we can redo our optimization every one month and apply those parameters if you like. And that's the way how I will trade exactly that strategy. And it looks quite well. Um, I know, and therefore uh, that is uh, now since two days, <laughs> it's, it's uh, running, starting on a demo account. Uh, as always, I start with a demo account and uh, I think in a couple of weeks, I will share with you uh, the results of uh, that strategy. Just uh, looking for two days, uh, it's not enough. Um, I think uh, even the two days are positive, but anyhow, uh, that doesn't count. Uh, let's not judge any strategy after a two days trading history. Uh, that would be not the, uh, the right thing. Okay, so in a nutshell, we know how to derive that statistical edge. And we know that if we have such an advantage, it's extremely valuable. It's helps us for discretionary trading or for systematic trading like what we have established here. And the good thing is if we consider all the days of the week separately, we we, we can find sub-strategies for each day of the week. So we create instantly a an, an very broad portfolio of strategies if we look for quite a lot of underlines. And if you trade those with a suitable stop loss and an EMA filter, then we um, find very good individual strategies, but an even better portfolio for all of them. 
So daily seasonals is a good thing. And um, I've started a few things more already on, on, on daily behaviors because it's uh, that promising uh, that I can combine the daily aspect, the week of the day, um, with other strategies as well. <clears throat> and uh, that kind of combination mm, looks good. Once again, if you are interested in um, the Excel sheets, um, I will send them. Um, it, once again, it will be a Dropbox link uh, because uh, for emails, the sheets are too big. But anyhow, uh, you will have access to those. Just send me an email um, to s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. And um, yeah, I will make sure that you get those data. We have one step more here with dailies. Okay, our portfolio is increasing and increasing. Looks good. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and hopefully we see everybody, uh, we see also back in two weeks from now. And then it will be about pullback strategies similar to the, our stock one, but now a little bit more in depth and not only related to stocks, forex and everything we can trade as well. Um, interesting topic. It's a little bit uh, of a good strategy, um, which is by its, uh, its own already interesting. So um, stay tuned and hopefully see you back in two weeks and enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.